So once you have Node installed and by um, extension npm, um, <clears throat> if you open up your terminal, you should be able to use both packages. Uh, so let me quit. You might have to quit and reopen it. So if you get something that says like Node not found or npm not found, um, then try closing your terminal and reopening it. In Windows, I believe this should work on Git Bash or PowerShell. Either should work with no problem. So I'm going to go ahead. We're going to go to the little folder I have for the class here. Uh, to run a, oh, wait, there we go. Great. Uh, and yeah, I just realized I, I actually have that folder wrong. It should be 2180, not 2108. That's okay. I'll fix that later. So do a quick npm basics folder. Okay, so we have a nice empty folder here. Uh, here's the VS code. And in your terminal, you should be able to type npm and get a whole bunch of stuff. So what does npm do? Uh, and why is it special? So before I get into that, let's talk about what we've done before to bring in external packages and whatnot. So I'm going to make a new file here, index.html, and we'll do main.js. So when we wanted to bring in Bootstrap, what did we do? Well, we went on the Bootstrap website. And we did a quick start and we grabbed the uh, we grabbed the CDN here. So we grabbed it and we pasted it into our um, our head tag here and the uh, the JavaScript here. And that works. That works just fine, especially for quick little projects. Um, if you if you don't have a project with a lot of dependencies, this is okay, um, but it has some limitations. One, if you have a lot of dependencies, imagining, imagine copying and pasting um, <clears throat> 10, 15, 20, 30 dependencies into CDNs. Your HTML file gets slowly unwieldy. The other thing is um, if you need to use the new version. So one thing we haven't talked about in this class yet is this concept of library versioning. So we've just been kind of using the latest packages and that's what you should do when you start a brand new project. You want to try to use the latest, but in the field, um, it's not often the case that you will necessarily get to use the latest of a library. And in fact, there might be a reason you have to use an older library or maybe it's just something nobody got around to upgrading. <clears throat> but version management of your dependencies becomes a problem. Um, so we can see here that we're using the latest Bootstrap 5.2.3. When I first started coding, um, Bootstrap was in version like 3. Uh, and in, that might not sound too long ago, but it was in version 3 for a long, long, long time before Bootstrap version 4 came out. Uh, it was a hard upgrade for them. And so um, when, it, when it would come time to upgrade, what would we have to do? We'd have to remove this link and let's say version 6 came out, we'd have to go find the version 6 link and paste it in. Well, imagine if you have 30 dependencies that you have to account for and look at. The only way you can find the version is kind of looking at it here. So version management is a bit of a pain. Um, upgrading is a bit of a pain to swap out one for another. And so <clears throat> the idea of a package manager uh, is that we can have a file that kind of keeps track of all these dependencies. So there's a command npm init. As you can see here, the little command line utility says we'll create a package.json file. Um, and so let's see what this does for us. It's going gonna, it's gonna to ask you a lot of things that um, really don't matter too much. It's more for uh, if you were to actually pa um, publish your own package.json your own node module, but we're not going to do that. So it really doesn't matter here. We can just kind of leave things in the description, but you would enter things like the name of the thing you're doing. So for instance, this is bootstrap. That's what that would be the name for the package, the version it's at, 
the description of what this package is. Um, <clears throat> this is a concept we'll talk about with um, build tools, but where does your where does your package actually start? And then is there anything that you use to test it? Because um, NPM has an idea of scripts and whatnot, so we can talk about that too. Where your code lives, the keywords that one would use to find your code, maybe it's some dependency for CSS styles, or it's a um, JavaScript, HTTP request, library, whatever. Who you are, if you're publishing this, you might want to get credit for publishing it. Um, that's what the open source community does. They'll, you know, you'll get cred as a developer by publishing code for other developers. Um, and licensing would be something like, if you were to open source your stuff, what under what use cases could your um, code be used? For, so for open source, it's typically an open thing to be used for any legitimate purpose. And what this utility does is it basically just generates a file called package.json. So it says, is this okay? Yes. And that's the default answer. I didn't have to type it, but here we have a package.json with all this information. You can look, it looks just like a JavaScript object because it is. JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. And we call it JSON because for, uh, formal JSON has double quotes around all the keys and all the strings are double quotes. You can't use single quotes like JavaScript. You can't neglect the, uh, the quotes the double quotes around keys for like you can in regular JavaScript objects because <coughs> JSON's used as a uh, communication protocol and I think we talked about that with uh, with APIs but just as a reminder um, cool so you might be saying okay well what does that have to do with the dependencies you talked about so the next beautiful tool that NPM comes with is the ability to install packages so let's say we wanted to instead of using CDNs, install bootstrap with uh, npm. We can just go ahead and run npm install bootstrap. Now if we take a look here, we've got some stuff happening. We've got package.json and it now has this new key, dependencies. And we've got bootstrap listed here at version uh, caret 5.2.3. Um, <clears throat> so we are have this place Immediately at a glance, we can tell what dependencies this project relies on and what version that they rely on. Um, we also have a couple things here that got generated. We have a folder called package lock JSON. This is an automated file, not folder, a file that gets generated by NPM when you install dependencies. And it basically keeps track of the dependencies of those dependencies because every dependency you install, so We've got, um, we just installed Bootstrap, but Bootstrap relies on Popper JS. And so you can see here that we also have this other dependency. And this just helps NPM keep track of things. You can run into things like dependency conflicts and hard to find bugs. That's why this package lock JSON. You don't have to do anything with it, really. I don't even read it. You just kind of let it live and it helps you out. And we have finally this node modules folder. And in here we have the dependency for Bootstrap, Popper.js, and Bootstrap itself. And inside here, you will actually get the source code for Bootstrap, um, including the, uh, the SAS files that were used and all that. But the, uh, the important thing that you get is this dist folder, and this stands for distribution. And this is the actual CSS that you would use on your website. So this bootstrap.min here, .css is the same as this one that you get from the CDN. And we also have this bootstrap bundle, min.js. Um, oh, oops, this is the CSS file, which I is here. And then, yeah, no, no, no that was right. And then there's the JS here, the bootstrap bundle .js. So it's the same thing, uh, .min.js right here. So it's the same thing as here. Um, but you might be wondering, how do I actually use it on my website? Uh, great question, and I will show you that in the next video. So thank you for watching.